Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to be taking a look at the contents of this box, which contains a Rock Pro 64 single board computer, which has been kindly supplied with you by my friends at Pine64. There they are, written on the box. Now, the Rock Pro 64 is a very well specified single board computer. It's got fantastic connectivity, so let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have our Rock Pro 64 all waiting to be opened up, and I really like the box it's in from Pine64 because on the back it says uh, Innovation Awaits, and on the front it says uh, Open Sesame. So let's uh, open Sesame and get inside, it'll be very straightforward. There we are, let's get the thing out. And uh, how do we get in here? It's sealed. Oh, there's some tape up there, I think. Let's bring in a Mr. Scissors can help out with that, hopefully. Rather well sealed, but uh, there we are, we can get in. And uh, here is our, oh, we've not properly got in. Mr. Scissors, come back again. I always struggle with bags, don't I? Never mind. There we are, got into that. And uh, wow, there we are, the uh, Rock Pro 64 single board computer. And uh, one of the things you can probably gather straight away, other than the fact it's got a mass of connectivity we'll come to in a second, it's slightly bigger in terms of form factor than some other single board computers. So for example, if we compare it to uh, the Rock 64 rather than the Rock Pro 64, you'll see it's uh, significantly bigger, and uh, the Rock uh, 64 is the same size as a, as a Raspberry Pi. So this board is almost double the size in terms of form factor of, of say, a Raspberry Pi and similar sized single board computers. I should point out there are two different models available, the Rock Pro 64. There's a two gigabyte model, which costs $59.99 on the Pine64 website. And there's also a four gigabyte model, which is the one we've got here, which costs us $79.99. And the system on a chip, you can clearly see here sitting at a rather jaunty angle. If we cut to a, a straighter shot of that chip, you will see it's a Rock chip RK3399. And this is a big little architecture hexa-core chip with quad-arm Cortex-A53 cores running at up to 1.5 GHz and dual-core ARM Cortex-A72 cores running at up to 2 GHz. And there's also an ARM Mali T864 GPU. Now, sitting just alongside the uh, system on a chip, we've got the memory. There's two chips here giving us either our 2 or 4 GB of RAM, and this is a LPDDR4 memory, so you've got fast memory on this board. And you might also have noticed we've got very nicely on this board a couple of holes here and here so we can mount a heatsink properly on this board. We'll be doing that later in the video. And also on the top of the board, as whilst we're here, you'll see over here there is a socket. This is a socket for fitting a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. There isn't on board Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on this board, but uh, you can fit a module to get it if you want it, and we'll be doing that later in the video. And then finally, also on top of the board, there's a socket for an eMMC flash module. And again, we'll be occupying that a bit later. This allows you to have flash storage on the board from which you can boot. If we move to the sides of the board, on the first short edge, we find a 3.5 mm TRRS jack, which gives us audio out, but also microphone in, which is rather handy. You don't always get that on a single board computer. We then have a couple of switches, a power switch and a reset switch, momentary press switches there. And then we have two USB 2 ports, which have got dedicated hosts. And then even more significantly, perhaps next to those, we have got a USB 3 port type A, and we've got a USB C tucked in quite sneakily under there. Moving around to the first long edge of the board, we've got various connectors here. We've got a connector here for a fan, for a real time clock battery, and an SP diff connector for digital audio. And then next to that, we've got a Raspberry Pi compatible 40 pin GPIO connector, and next to that, various camera connectors. In fact, on this board, we've got three camera connectors. And the first two of these are CSI ports, camera serial interface ports, or effectively you've got stereo CSI ports on this board. And then beneath this, we've got a CMOS camera connector. And you've probably also noticed we've got a recovery button just sitting down there by this camera connector as well. If we move to the second short edge, you'll see in the middle, we've got the always welcome gigabit ethernet. And then flanking it on one side, we have the HDMI connector, full-size HDMI, offering 4K at up to 60 frames a second. 
And then on the other side, we have a 5.5 millimeter barrel jack for power. You know I like my barrel jacks for power. This requires 12 volts, and usually for a single board computer, at a, at least three amps. Finally, on the second long edge, we find a bevy of connectors here, which allow you to connect a uh, LCD screen with a touch interface if you wish it. We uh, will see again the uh, EMMC module socket over there. But the main thing here, the real star of this board, is we have the PCIe times four slot. We've got a PCIe slot on a single board computer. I think this warrants a close up, doesn't it? There we are. We've finally got PCIe times four on a single board computer. And I'll say a bit more about what you can use that for in the next segment of the video. If we flip back to look at the whole board and then maybe turn it upside down to look at the base, there's not a lot to see on the base. The main thing is we've got a micro SD card slot there. And it's worth pointing out you can boot the Rock Pro 64 either from the micro SD card or from the MMC flash module. Or in fact, there's also 128 megabytes of SBI flash on board as well. And I think you can boot from that. But overall, as I'm sure you've now gathered, the Rock Pro 64 is a very well specified, a very feature rich single board computer. If we visit the Pine64 website and search in the store for Rock Pro 64, we discover that in addition to the boards themselves, there's lots of different accessories available. And I've got some of these here. They've very kindly been supplied by uh, Pine64 for purposes of this review. And uh, probably the most important thing they've sent is uh, this, which is a power supply. This is a 12 volt, three amp power supply, which we'll use to power our Rock Pro 64. They've also sent me these. This is a 16 gigabyte EMMC flash memory module. We can install an operating system on this. It'll be faster than running off a micro SD card. And this is a USB adapter for actually putting an operating system onto that on a PC. So what you do is you turn this thing over, you'll see there's an EMMC connector down there. So we can take this card and very carefully put that onto there. It'll click into place like that. And then we can put this into a PC, image the operating system onto the card, and then we'll insert it back into the Rock Pro 64. They've also sent me these, this is a USB serial console adapter with all the wires for debugging and things like that. And this is the, uh, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth module for the Rock Pro 64. Finally, they've also sent me this, which is a heatsink. You really need a heatsink on a Rock chip RK3399 because it's a powerful um, chip. And so uh, let's get inside here. Mr. Scissors comes back in. There are different heatsink uh, opportunities or things you can do on the Rock Pro 64. How do we get this out? It's sealed again, dear me. I'm not having a good time with bags today, am I? There we are. And uh, all that looks like uh, some sort of thermal paste. This is the heatsink. This is a heatsink which is, I think, 30 millimeters tall. And so this can be used as a passive heatsink on the board. There's also a, a lower profile heatsink. I think it's 20 millimeters, which can be fitted with a fan. But I'm gonna be fitting uh, this heatsink to make a fully passive system. And uh, by the magic of filmmaking, here we are, the heatsink is now fitted on the Rock Pro 64. And I've also fitted the Wi-Fi module. And therefore, we're now all ready to boot things up and then try this thing out. But before we do, I just want to mention three other peripherals which are available from Pine64, which I think are very interesting. The first of these is they do a $45, what they call desktop stroke NAS case which is a, seems to be a very nice peripheral for taking the uh, Rock Pro 64 and, and some drives and obviously creating a NAS unit or something like that. And potentially linked to that, they already sell two different PCIe cards to plug into the PCIe times four slot on the board. And specifically, these are a board that offer you two SATA ports plugging into the PCIe slot and a board that offer you an NVMe M.2 slot. So those I think are very interesting. I hope to try those out in a future video. Right, I've now got the Rock Pro 64 all connected up and running, and here we are in Ubuntu, specifically in Ubuntu 18.04 Bionic Beaver running an LXDE desktop. And I think it's fair to say that while the Rock Pro 64 is a very nice piece of hardware, the software is still catching up. They rely on their community to create all the distros, and they're still being developed for the Rock Pro 64. So, for example, here, whilst this seems to be a very stable version of Ubuntu, it seems to work a very nicely, no, no problems at all. But uh, there are certain issues that, for example, I can't use Wi-Fi at the moment, I can't 
use the Wi-Fi module that's linked into the board. I'm on a wired connection right now. But other than that, things seem to be working. I can run up and say Chromium browser and it'll uh, come up. There we are. And let's go to somewhere different. Let's go to explain in the future for once. And uh, yes, that seems to work no problem at all. And uh, I thought we should just have a look at how the machine is uh, running along. So we've got eight top there, which is a nice big font for you. So you can see we have got one, two, three, four, five, six processors running. We have got our, uh, well, four gigabytes of memory. I'm sure mine has some use for the graphics. Everything is working absolutely fine there. And I thought it might be worth seeing if all these uh, processor cores will run together because we've got a little big configuration on this board. So to attest that out, let's nip into LX terminal down there. And uh, I think somewhere in the buffer, I've got that command sitting, a suspension command just to stress things out. And if we run that, yes, you see that uh, all of the processor cores will run together. So this is quite a powerful board because we can run all those at the same time. Hopefully suspense will finish that. It is, and it's done that testing. I think that's reasonably good. I can't remember. It's certainly faster than we've seen uh, on some other single board computers. Anyway, I don't think there's a lot else really to show you here right now. Oh, I've installed GIMP. Probably show you that. Now that'll come up. GIMP seems to uh, run up and work. Uh, Okay, no problem at all. And uh, there we are, I've got nothing on the machine to work on, but it seems to be working. So uh, there we are, I think for now, we, we can see that the Rock Pro 64, it seems to be a nice responsive machine. It is a powerful machine after all, hexacore processor, the Rock Pro 64, a very nice piece of hardware indeed. As you probably gathered, I really like the Rock Pro 64 and I look forward to benchmarking it against other single board computers in future videos. But now that's it for this time. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.